this evening I have the task of telling you about one of the worst plagues in human history, uh, and that's the epidemic of HIV AIDS. The history for this epidemic is actually short, but I'm afraid that this epidemic will become much worse before it gets better. And this disease now is a household name, but it actually appeared first only in 1981. And I'm just going to show a few slides that are uh, my own slides because I happen to be a physician finishing training in the west side of Los Angeles when the tip of this massive iceberg was first uh, detected. And it goes back to almost 30 years ago, in late 1980, when a young gay man came to the hospital, short of breath and with uh, skin covered with lesions, as shown here. And his shortness of breath was clearly due to bilateral pneumonia, as shown on the x-ray. And he had these hor horrible skin lesions, which to the dermatologist was recognized as a special kind of skin tumor called Kaposi sarcoma. And we did not what, know what was going on with him, but he was clearly in respiratory distress. And immediately, uh, a biopsy was performed, and, and the cause of the pneumonia was, to everyone's surprise, an organism called Pneumocystis carinii, which was not seen except in people who are immunocompromised because of chemotherapy or immunosuppressive therapy. Yet this young man had no such uh, medical history. It is suggested that the virus, even though it entered rather early, probably spread uh, very inefficiently and slowly, but again, that's our speculation. But what has allowed the virus to pick up momentum, particularly by the 1960s and 1970s, so by the time of 1981, when the first cases were recognized, it had already disseminated throughout much of the world. And the key factors that we like to speculate about include urbanization, which this figure suggests, and associated with that, population increases. Epidemic diseases follow population density increases. It's not surprising. And of course, epidemic diseases will be transported with uh, greater ease of uh, access to transportation. And there may have been behavioral changes. And there is a lot of speculation whether some of the vaccination campaigns, uh, for example, those that took place in the 60s and 70s, to, to stamp out uh, smallpox, whether some of those practices, if, if unsanitary from case to case, may have in fact helped to propel this epidemic in sub-Saharan Africa. But the bottom line, once again, is we really don't know. These are all conjectures. And then how did it escape detection for so long? If, if this scenario is correct. Again, I don't have an answer. We could think of possible explanations. Maybe early on the virus was not very aggressive and the disease was uh, more indolent. That's a reasonable explanation. Maybe it was just as aggressive, but there were many dead ends in which the virus did not spread f further so that it was not recognized. We really don't know. I, I would say since 1981, we have not observed an increase in virulence of HIV. It seems to be uh, killing at the same pace. Once it got out of Africa, it is pretty clear from the genetic evidence that it first went to Haiti. And that makes um, sense in that there were many Haitians working in French-speaking uh, countries in that region of Africa, and they probably brought the virus back. This is a complex slide which I will not explain. It simply says the, the virus most likely went to Haiti, and from Haiti 
into the gay men population in the U.S. And much of the dissemination, in fact, occur from the U.S. to Europe, to Australia, to Canada, etc.